So last year I sold my doc, The Pearl of Africa, to Netflix. It took me years to make that happen. Here are my five things to think about if you want to sell your film to Netflix. First off, PR and buzz. Generating buzz around projects has always been important in order for a film to be successful. It used to be through a film festival success that most film was sold and got distributed around the world. Even though this is still true, many online projects that started as self-funded web series has found their way onto Netflix. Ours wasn't an exception. Can we smoke next to this thing? It might explode. Don't wait. Huh? You're scared. Yeah. Let us see if it will explode. It's a good experiment. If we explode, we run that side. In our pitch to Netflix, we emphasized our success record. Having had success with a web series, generated lots of PR, social media following, and a festival acclaim. It was key in generating interest. Joining us now is Johnny von Wolstrom, the director of The Pearl of Africa. Thanks for being with us, Johnny. Good to talk to you. Can you just tell us how you met Cleopatra? We did pitch the project directly to the originals department at an earlier stage than we sold it. At that time, we only had a web series with lots of PR and it got us invited to the Netflix LA office for a pitch without any connections before. Later, we put together a PDF that collected a summary of data and that helped to convince them to buy the film. What I think you need to understand is that they look at data much like a YouTuber does their analytics. They analyze the film's potential. With so much good projects out there, having just a great story isn't enough you need to make sure that there's an audience out there for your project. Building that success yourself before you go to Netflix will only better your chances. You might not guarantee it, but it's better chances. I was born here. A land with beautiful mountains and deep dark forest. Home to wild animals like the golden lion and elephant gray. A country place with diversity in ethnicity, gender, flora, fauna. Eating all this richness as a people and as a nation, we still struggle to recognize and appreciate this diversity. Instead, our people have left all this for dead. Even though I think shit works of art will continue to find their way onto Netflix, I truly believe that anyone who cares about making their film cinematic, they stand a greater chance to sell their film. You just need to look at what type of projects Netflix buys for their originals department to understand where their values lie. It might not be the strongest stories or they might not stand out because they're so unique, but they've focused on projects that give the home viewer a cinematic experience that competes with the cinema. They focus on great audiovisual storytelling, images that are perfect and audio that sounds like a blockbuster. Having an overexposed dock with crappy audio, that doesn't cut it. There's just too many people out there that know how to expose an image correctly and how to record audio without noise. Sure, some great projects that are 100% unique and innovative, they might break through and prove this rule to be wrong. But look at the greater picture. Please fucking learn how to expose an image correctly. Please learn how to record clean audio. Then if we look at the story, you need to consider that Netflix and other players like Amazon or HBO only make a few projects each year. All of them, they want to be breakout successes. Does that mean your little indie breathes global success? <laughs> Probably not. Even ours, that was a huge media buzz for several years, was thought to be not broad enough to become a big success story that they were looking for. 
That means they won't put the big money behind it. Instead, they license the films. They look for Oscars. And I think our film could have had a chance for the Oscars if it would have come out one or two years earlier. When we released the web series, it was the right timing. It was perfect timing. But by the time the film actually was finished and came out, there wasn't as much focus in the media on Uganda and trans issues. By that time, trans issues had become mainstream in the media. That also means that the big players who commission projects like this have already bought tons of projects. If we would have released it back then, I'm sure it could have been an Oscar contender with the money behind it. But without having the force of the big players to do that, it's not going to happen. So instead of having that chance, it got to be one of many on the trans subject. You need to consider these things when you're thinking about what story you're going to do and will it hold up. Just thinking that the story is so brilliant won't cut it. You need to think about all these issues, that you're competing with other people and other stories. So find a story that is strong, unique, and that plays an important role in society. That way of thinking will raise your chances greatly. I've started working with a new film, and already I'm building an audience long before the project is official. The whole channel, this channel, is a way for me to build an audience around what I do and create. In long term, I hope I can build a strong community of filmmakers that not only watches what I do, but that support each other and make great things. Building an audience like that versus viewers of a film is two completely different things. Today I believe you have to build an audience around you as a person. You need to build a close relationship online and in real life to other humans. By doing that, you can create communities that transcend whatever stupid broadcaster is able to do for you. But this means that you need to change how you see audiences. You need to feel more involved to become more engaged. It's not enough to sit around and think you're such a brilliant artist without giving anything else than a freaking film every five years. Seriously, who fucking cares? Look at what type of engagement vloggers have. How deeply engaged the respective communities are in the vloggers and their stories. That should give you some clue of where we're going. You should always first try to sell directly wherever you're trying to sell your project. For us, Netflix was always the goal. We had a plan to sell it to them since the project was first thought of. Then things might happen or you can't take that for granted. So you go out and you try other things too. For us that was HBO, CNN, Amazon, BBC and smaller channels. All was interested in the project. Many of them went really far into discussions and even negotiations. But for us, global reach was always more important than money. We didn't focus on this project, but far down the line. In years, we want to continue to work internationally, even though we're a Swedish production company. Long term, I just don't see how the majority of Swedish films will make it financially. Right now, many rely on public service or governmental support. But given how many films that are being made and how many filmmakers there are, it won't be a way to survive long term. Now, this isn't only a Swedish problem, but most of the young filmmakers I see coming up today, they have dual careers. One is commercial work or education. The other is passion projects, which is your project that are films. That's been true for a long time now, but I think we're gotten to a point where it's a more sustainable way of working than applying for funding for your projects. How's your narrative changed if it did? It's supposed to be about Cleo and her mom from the beginning, uh, and that didn't really work out as we hoped it, but then she met Nelson, uh, and then it turned into a love story, uh, which in the end feels much more uh, like it was supposed to be from the beginning.
Oh damn. I just got an email. I'll be pitching it to Netflix today instead of next month. Really? Yeah. Set because of the premiere. That's awesome. Oh um, yeah, but I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. With time. I see this developing with the filmmakers developing skills to build audiences. As soon as they do, money can come into the projects in a different way, in a more modern way, I'd say. Because of this, we focus on global distribution. And when we didn't manage to sell the film as an original deal to Netflix, we instead went with an aggregator who pitches projects each month to Netflix. There are not so many, so they pick a few projects that they present and then Netflix come back with a bid, or not. We scheduled the pitch to be at the same time as we had our European premiere, which generated buzz and where we were inviting commissioning editors to look to buy the film. This pressured a deal from Netflix to come up quicker, and it worked. We got a bid straight away. So many young filmmakers are really eager to just go out and shoot their film. They just want to make a film right now. I think that's great, but don't be naive. Shooting a film with too low budget or without resources is rarely going to compete with the big Netflix releases. It's not just about being able to shoot the film. It's also about having the right people to support the project early so they will be able to open doors to money or other people that can help you make the best film you can make. Rushing things hinder that. I'd say the best way to make it as a young filmmaker today is to be a consistent YouTuber for years and years. Okay, let's try and find a spot that I recognize. Oh, it should be like... We should be able to see it, really. Is it he lives. Oh shit, he's actually coming back. <laughs> DJI, good on you. Oh man, that was scary. Building an audience and developing as an artist until you're ready to make a big project happen. Doing short films or web series. is a, It's a way to develop and build audiences long term. With those shorts, you can still do the festival circuit. And you can have your career take off with the right network and all. But going out with a no budget film and trying to hook a big player like Netflix is super naive. You need to consider how fierce the competition is. One way I'd do it if I didn't have money is to build a YouTube audience to 10,000 subscribers. Why 10,000? Well, during that time I'd make sure I'd network with other YouTubers becoming friends and starting to talk about collaboration on a bigger project. Then go and activate your YouTube space when you get to 10,000 subscribers. When you have that, you can borrow equipment from them, even red cameras and studios. Make a project destined for YouTube. That's the only rule to borrow their equipment and studios. Then you make sure that all your collaborators are big enough so that you can push it out to their audiences and yours. All of you grow and all of you win. This to me is a future model to make films a success. With time, you'll scale this and do it with brands. Do make yourself and the project attractive. Think about how to make the most out of the production value. Use a great cinematic camera with a great DOP who shoots the project. Find talented people to collaborate with. That will raise the production value a lot. Build this community of collaborators instead of focusing so much on the raising of a budget. Then once you've done that, you then go out with all that set up and try to find funding. You'll have both a solid team, a production template, and a showreel to prove that you're the real deal. This would be one way of doing it. Another would be the way we did our web series. We took our own money and we invested it in 
me shooting alone for a month in Uganda. I was a skilled cinematographer with my own equipment, so I could go there and shoot it good enough to be pitched to Netflix. <laughs> we then turned that into a web series that we collaborated with Huffington Post to launch as the media was deeply into the gay rights issue in Uganda. That was launched together with a crowdfunding campaign where we raised money to finalize the shooting of the film and the protagonist's sex reassignment surgery in Thailand. It was a massive success and we got several license offers for just a web series after that. We also was able to raise some more money, not a lot, but enough to finalize the shooting. And then we edited the film over a year's time and sent it to festivals. It was selected into competition at Hot Dogs, the biggest North American doc festival. After that, we were able to get post-production funding and finalize the film for the festival. That's two ways that I think is a shoestring way of doing it. Almost forgot. Uh, we're doing a course on Netflix, how to sell to Netflix. So if you have anything that you want us to include in the course, comment below and also new live Q&A next week. Still got a cold. So see you next week. It's a good day for the road.